Today we're really uh, here to learn about laughter as medicine, and um, we all know laughter is kind of a universal language, and uh, I'm sure Trevor, Trevor Smith, who is our presenter today, is going to talk more about that. He is actually a certified laughter leader, trained in this, and has facilitated many therapeutic laughter programs for a variety of different community groups and organizations, right? Is that right? And um, he knows that laughter is good medicine, and God knows we need some of that. <laughs> and will share with us its stress reducing and um, other therapeutic values today. So uh, without further ado, let's all have a good laugh <laughs> together. <laughs> to each other. For people, uh, before I use the microphone, I can also throw my voice, but maybe it's just easier to do this way. Does that sound good? Okay. Uh, so, as you know, my name is Trevor Smith, and I'm a certified laughter leader. This is kind of a funny name or title for any kind of uh, professional kind of position. Um, so I just want to give you a little background on how I got into doing this work and, you know, my, my journey to doing you know, this, these laughter programs. Uh, so a number of years ago, I was a, a recreation therapist for a local human service agency, and I was doing programs for folks with disabilities, uh, running community-based programs. Uh, and I came, I, so I was looking for different ways to enhance the quality of life of the folks I was supporting. And I said, I, need, I said to myself, I need to find something that's going to really improve their quality of life. So I came across this organization called the World Laughter Tour. I said to myself, this sounds kind of cool. What is the World Laughter Tour? And I did a little more research and I called this gentleman up who uh, ran this organization. And I said, what do you do? Do you do stand up? <laughs> <laughs> do you do stand up or gags or um, sketch comedy? Or... And he said to me, it was really interesting, and we'll get into it more as we get into the program here, is he said, no, we use laughter as a way to improve people's health without using comedy or jokes. I said, oh, that sounds really fascinating to me. Uh, so um, I did a little more research, and then he said to me, uh, we do these trainings. And I said, trains for what? <laughs> <laughs> and he said to me, uh, we, we, uh, you know, we do these trainings where we train people uh, to do these programs called laughter clubs, or therapeutic laughter. Uh, and I said, oh, wow, that sounds interesting. And we do these trainings all the time, all around the country, so feel free to come for our training. And I did. So I signed up for a two-day training and I became a, a certified laughter leader. Um, and that's how I got to doing this. And then once I became a certified laughter leader, I brought this program back to where I was working at the time for the folks I was supporting. Uh, and I ran a monthly laughter club, uh, which was really cool. And I found out after doing these monthly laughter clubs with my clients, uh, people were happier, they were upbeat, they felt more connected, more energetic. Uh, they seemed in a better mood. So I said, this, I said to myself, this is something I really need to do with other groups. I need to spread the word to other organizations on the importance of laughter. Uh, so that's how I got started. I eventually started to reach out, or people would reach out to me and have me come in to organizations like this, or, or events like this to do uh, these laughter programs. So that's how I got started. Let's get a little brief, um, little background around that. I also wanted to mention a couple of people who are really very important in the whole laughter movement. There's a gentleman named, he's no longer living, his name is Norman Cousins. Who knows, who knows that name? Or that, okay, how, how do you know Norman Cousins? Um, the same way, from laughter uh, therapy. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. With hospice. Hospice, terrific. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, some other. Uh, no, um, he was more. He was a journalist, actually, um, and he. You probably know the story too. I don't remember it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm here, right? Uh, he um, he got this terrible arthritic condition. He got really sick. And got sicker and sicker. He went on a business trip to Russia, I think it was at the time. 
And he came back and he got, it couldn't get better. He was just really sick. And he got so frustrated, he was trying all kinds of uh, therapies and medicine and seeing doctors. And so after a while, he decided to uh, create his own self-recovery program. And he locked himself into a hotel room for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Not a bad idea when you're sick, right? <laughs> and but what he did was, what he did was he uh, created a crazy own self-discovery program, recovery program, where he used mega doses of vitamin C, love, faith, a positive attitude, and laughter by watching funny movies and TV shows like Candy Camera and the Marx Brothers. Uh, the folks remember the Marx Brothers. Uh, so, and after he did this, after he, he would watch these funny movies and TV shows, he, he would get at least two hours of pain-free sleep. And yeah, you should try it sometime. <laughs> uh, but he, then he uh, wrote a book about it called Anatomy of an Illness as Perceived by the Pain. Oh, maybe you've heard this book in your hospice work. Yeah, okay. And it's a great, it's a great book. I would recommend it. Uh, it's called Anatomy of the Illness as Perceived by the, by the Patient. Um, so really, really it was kind of anecdotal um, evidence of what he went through to get over this terrible um, illness by using laughter and humor. So it's really fascinating. There was a movie about it too, some years ago, with Ed Asner as Dr. Norman Cousins. Uh, so yeah, should check that out. Uh, so I just want to mention him. I think he's a really big part of the whole laughter humor movement. Uh, I want to also mention real quick another gentleman. Uh, he's an Indian doctor, and his name is Madan Kateria. And he, uh, this is that, oh, that mid-90s, he was doing some research for a health magazine. And he, as he was doing his research, he said to himself, I'm doing all this great research, but I'm not putting it into practice. So what he did was, he got a group of friends of his, including his personal physician, and they went down um, to a local park, right near his office, and they started, originally they started doing jokes. But what happens when you start doing jokes? What happens after a while? You run out of jokes. <laughs> you were good. <laughs> you know, and he, so you're trying to find what you, so, and, or, or the jokes get really bad, um, so that's another problem. So his friend said, Dr. Kateri, you need to find a way to keep this group together. We can't just do jokes all the time. So what he did, he did some more research, and he found out that fake laughter had the same emotional and physical benefits as real laughter. Um, so he created these games and exercises, which we'll do here together uh, today. Uh, and he had a background in theater before he became a doctor, and he improv and uh, community theater. Um, so he used some of his back theater background to create these exercises, um, which was really cool. Uh, so that's, that's a little story about Dr. Kateri. Now, as a result of that, he, uh, his group of 12, grew from you know, creating, you know, introducing these exercises to this group of 12, his group of 12 grew into a group of 200 people. Wow. And now we're through over 1,000 laughter clubs in India alone. And 50, I'm sorry, there are over 6,000 laughter clubs in 50 countries around the world. So it's really amazing. It's really incredible, whole, you know, the whole movement is really amazing. It really is. Uh, so, anyway, so let's give you a little background on that. So as we get here, I just want to ask people, why, why is it good to laugh? Where are some benefits of laughter? Lowers blood pressure. Lowers blood pressure, right. That's important. And heart rate as well. Yeah. Blood pressure and heart rate. Lowers that. Uh, what else? Where's some other? Feels good. Feels great, right? And you'll see that as we start doing this. You feel really good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, see, she's always laughing already. It's really great. Yeah. Uh, what else? What are some other benefits? Fun. It's fun, yep. It makes you forget about what's happening in the world. It makes you forget, yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful diversion. It really is. It's contagious. It's contagious. Great. Anybody else? It's such a relief and it changes my perspective. It's a release and it changes your perspective, absolutely. And it's great for your, uh, what we call mental balance, absolutely. Uh, what else, any other? One, one, there's one benefit you haven't mentioned that I think is really important. 
Okay, should I show? Okay, uh, so, so one, the one thing that I really enjoy about this work and doing laughter and doing laughter club with, with folks is it brings people together. It's a social connector. When you think about laughter, it's really a social activity. So when I don't, so if you're a laugh, and I see you laugh, I want to laugh too. So we're making that connection with each other through laughter. And you'll see that as we start doing some of these exercises. Um, yeah, so it's really a social glue. We've heard that term before. Um, and you'll, again, um, it, it's so important to make those connections through laughter. It really is. And laughter is contagious. So when you, when you want to, this is my laugh here. When, when you laugh, I see you laugh. I want to laugh too, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and we'll get into that too. We'll see that as we move along. Um, any other comments? Any other things we haven't mentioned around benefits since before we get into our main part of our, our program here? Yep. Um, if I'm looking a little confused, it's because I'm only getting about one in five words. Okay. So I, have, I have hearing aids, but the way you're holding the mic, or okay. something about the sound system is breaking it up for me. So I, I okay. hear you say so, and I hear and I can make out laughter. That's a pretty good word to make out, I guess. Yeah, they're okay. <laughs> How's that? That better now? Can you hear me now? Hold it a little further away. I don't know. Okay, is that better? Maybe. Let's see. Okay. If not, we'll... If you see me start to laugh, you'll know you're making progress. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, all right. Trevor, <laughs> I have one other... Um, yeah. I think that I also see um, laughter break down barriers. Uh-huh. That yeah. oftentimes when two groups are um, at each other, at loggerheads, um, laughter can often uh, break that down and, and get people in a more common space. That's right. Con breaks through conflict, you know. Right, exactly. And that's... That's important too, you know, and using laughter as a way to kind of make those those connections and create those, you know, those positive feelings and attitudes. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, how's this okay so far? Is it better? A little better. Okay. Um, so we'll laugh about it as we go along here. Um, so what we're gonna do now? We're gonna do a little kind of warm up. Well, I'd like to try to warm people up before we start laughing. So as you kind of, just kind of move your arms around like this. Oh. <laughs> you know, just kind of move your arms like this. You know, it's been a long morning, maybe. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna stretch out. Because a big part of laughter as we start stretching is breathing, right? As we start to breathe here. Um, and you, as you start to laugh, you start to breathe in positive air. So take a deep breath, breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> Ready? I feel good, so I feel good already. <laughs> <laughs> breathe in. And then as we do this one more time, as we uh, breathe in and as we breathe out, we're gonna do a big laugh, so we'll go like this. Ready?
So how does that feel so far? Feel good? So as we do this, and I know it seems a little kind of ridiculous to laugh without laughing at something, like a funny TV show or, or a funny comedian, uh, but as we start doing this as a group, it becomes more real. Okay, so it's the whole idea of faking it until you make it idea. So just remember that, okay? And I'm giving you permission to be as silly and as childlike as you want to be, okay? Do you have permission to do that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just don't hold back. We're gonna have fun with this, okay? Uh, so we did the, you know, our little mantra, and our little warm up here. So repeat after me, so another way we're gonna get warmed up here is, Get ready? It's pretty after me. Ho. Ho, ho. Ha. Ha. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. He. 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 Ho, ho. He. He. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. He. He. Ho, ho. He. He. Good. You're really good at this. Good job. Really good. Okay. Also, a couple comments. No, I, I don't like to call them rules, but it's a couple of things I want to point out to you as we do this together as a group is um, we're all, we all laugh at each other and at each other, and we laugh because life can be silly, absurd, and it's downright funny. And we're going to celebrate that here today. Uh, also, if you're under a, a doctor's care, you know, you know your body better than I do, so feel free to sit back and watch, okay? And we're here to, you know, we're not here to compete, analyze, criticize. We're here for the joy of laughing. Okay? That makes sense? I'm okay, good? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. So, we're, so this is our first official exercise. So here we go. So this is called, this is called the wake up laugh. Okay? We're kind of waking up, and, or some people are anyway. Um, and we're going to go like this. We're going like this. Like this, if you can. Your shins, like your feet, yeah, your feet, yeah, like this. And as we do this, we're gonna start to laugh, and we're gonna go, go up. I'll show you. <laughs> Whoa! 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 Too. So we make eye contact. 
that reinforces that. Um, so the whole, the whole idea of laughter is contagious. So anyway, I uh, just want to point that out, folks. So our next exercise is uh, going to be, who likes milkshakes? <laughs> who likes milkshakes? Anybody? Okay, what, what, flavor, what, what flavor do you like? Chocolate. Chocolate, okay, excellent, excellent. What about other flavors? Do you Vanilla. Like? Vanilla, that's a good one. Coffee. Coffee. Ooh. Strawberry. Strawberry. Malted milk. Nice, I like that one. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Let's take one of each. Somebody said uh, martini? No. No, malted milk. Not malted milk. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other folks. Okay, good. Okay. So we have what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a milkshake here together. Okay? So we're gonna pretend that we have a, a glass of milk in this hand, like this. We all can do this together. And a glass of milk in this hand. Okay? This is what we're gonna do. So you ready? You ready for this? Not really? It's alright. Uh, so here we go. Ready? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. silly and make your, your milkshake and go like this and go whoop whoop splat <laughs> okay if you want okay or if you don't like the milkshake you can go like this and go whoop whoop whoa <laughs> so you have a couple choices here okay so you ready here we go whoop whoop whoa <laughs> Whoa! 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 
You okay? Um, also, I want to also point out, you know, for, I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, I'm not here to put anybody on the spot. So if there's anything we do here that you feel uncomfortable with or don't feel like doing, just sit back and watch as much, okay? There's no pressure. Um, part of the thing, my, one of the goals I usually have for my programs like this is that we're all included, nobody's excluded, okay? I'm really creating laughter in a very supportive, non-judgmental environment, okay? All right, so, catch your breaths. And just relax. Thank you. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Wow. Ooh, it's also not ready. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're catching work. Good. We're in a good spot here. Uh, so, any questions, comments as we move along here? I know I gotta go a little fast sometimes with some of these exercises. So, I'll make sure I get. Any comments or questions so far? We're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so our, our next exercise is called the imaginary ball laugh. Okay? Imaginary, imaginary ball laugh. Go ball. ball. Imaginary ball laugh. Okay. So I have a ball in my pocket. Let's see. Let's see the ball. You see it? Okay. Okay. Actually, it's a tennis ball. See? Okay, so that's my improv <laughs> background there. <laughs> uh, which is not much. Uh, so, uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass this imaginary ball around to somebody. And if you're the person who I pass it to, you have to catch it and laugh. And we'll all laugh together as a group. Okay? And then you're going to pass it on to the next person and do the same thing. Okay? That make, make sense? Passing it around. Yeah, or you can, I mean, it doesn't have to be around. You can be in that direction. You can be across, across the room there to the person. So we have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you don't want to get hit with the work. Well, like a dummy. That's right. There's, there's a lot of work involved in this program. I don't know if you that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and homework assignments, too. Uh, so here we go. So I have the imaginary ball in my hand. Okay. Pass it to Michael. Oh. So it could be a chair, it could be a band, it could be a 
got the book. It could be a basketball, football, anything you want. Okay, but the idea is once you change that, when you pass that object, you have to tell what that object is to the person you're passing to. You have to tell what it is. To yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell, yeah. Well, I, we're not quite at that point yet, but <laughs> uh, okay. So when you get the when you want to change your object, you have to tell what the object is to the person you're throwing it to. Okay. So that person has to do the object that you're. I, I don't get it. Yeah. What? So, say, I I start with the with the tennis ball I had before, right? Yeah. And I decide to change it into a watermelon. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. so yeah. I'm going to throw a watermelon to you. Thank right. you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for, uh, thank you for clarifying that, by the way. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, does that make sense now? Yes, it does. Okay, okay. Or another, another part of it is you could keep it the same thing. Yeah. So, so I pass you a watermelon, and you, keep it, you could keep it as a watermelon. Or change it to another object. So it's all in the way you have to catch the object. That's right. Uh, she's good. She is good. <laughs> all right. So you ready? So I'm going to start with the, uh, the tennis ball I had before. And I'm going to throw a tennis ball and see. Over to you. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So it's still a tennis ball then. So it's still a tennis ball. Okay, I'm going to use my first thought at first. Mm -hmm. This is a kitten. 
exercises we're going to do a wrap-up. Um, so uh, the next exercise is called the airplane laugh. Okay? So are you ready for this? Okay, so uh, pretend you're, we're, we're going. Where do people want to, first of all, where do you want to go? If you had a choice to go anywhere in the world. Waitley. Waitley. <laughs> that was my first choice, actually. Yeah. <laughs> where, any, any other folks? Also. Hawaii, that's a good place to go, yeah. Alaska. Alaska, sure, yeah. Okay, other folks? New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, yes. Australia. Australia, that's Iceland. a good long flight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anybody else? Wales. Wales. Uh, uh, UK, right, not Wales Mass? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, uh, anybody else? Paris. Paris. Ooh, wee wee. Wee wee. We wish. Wee wee. Yeah, there you go. Right. Uh, so, um, so we have our places we want to go. So, by the way, we're, we have first class tickets. We have first class tickets. Um, and you have a nice seat. Yeah, yeah. Right? Have a nice dinner. You have a nice movie to watch. Caviar if you like it, or wine, or champagne. And good neighbors is paying for everything. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. That's why we're pretending. Okay. That's why we're pretending here. That's right. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So we're ready. Ready. Um, so we're in our seats. Our nice plush seats. Getting comfortable. And so we're getting ready for takeoff. And here it goes. So here goes the plane.
How do people feel, first of all, right now? Good. Good, yeah. Good. Feeling good over here? Good. Good. Um, so as we kind of you know, catch our breath here for a few minutes, uh, I just wanted to ask folks a question I always like to talk about, or a topic I like to talk about, is do people know the difference between laughter and humor? Do people know the difference between laughter and humor? Mm. All right. Anybody else? Mm-hmm. Add on to that. I think laughter comes when you hear humor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Laughter is contagious. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how is that different than, than uh, humor? You think? It is a contagious. It can be. <laughs> it can be. It can, it can be. be. Humor is how you perceive it too. So mm-hmm. Not all humor. People aren't op- open to the same type of humor. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have a comment about the difference, the difference between laughter and humor? Anybody? Um, and exactly, I'm going to kind of pick up what you said. Is um, you know, humor really is uh, very personal and very what they call it subjective. So what's funny to me may not be funny to you. Okay, so we all have our own senses of humor. Um, and really, our humor is really based on our, our taste, our intelligence, our values, um, also the culture that we live in. Each culture is different in how they perceive humor. So you have to be really careful what, you know, what culture you're in. Um, May I ask what you said first? What was the first word you said? Uh, taste? Taste. Taste. Okay. Yep, yeah, taste. Um, and also your mood at the moment as well. Okay, uh, so all those things are really important when you, when you talk about hum- humor. And one of the reasons I don't do humor or do jokes is if I tell a joke, not everybody's gonna laugh or find it funny. Or you could, you could find it offensive or threatening. Um, so there are a lot of different, uh, different ways, you know, you, things that you have to really remember when you do humor or do jokes. Um, so I try to re- remove all that so Nobody gets offended, or gets hurt, or threatened. Okay. Um, any other comments about laughter and humor? Any thoughts about? Continue other thoughts. Um, there's also something called toxic humor. There's something called toxic humor. You ever heard of that term before? Okay. Yep. I'm still feeling guilty that I threw you a bobcat, and I'm not sure if that was toxic humor or not. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I apologize. No, that's good. That's, that's a good. That's... <laughs> well, you could say that's an aggressive humor. <laughs> uh, so when I say toxic humor, that's making fun at some, uh, someone else at their own expense. Okay, and that's not what I do here, or we do here as a group. Uh, we're laughing with each other, not at each other. Um, and also, when you talk about humor, when people tell jokes or try to say something that's funny, um, you don't, like you were saying, you don't all get the joke, but we're all, people who don't get the joke are kind of left out. So you're not included in the humor. You're just, you're excluded, and you don't get it, or whatever that may be. Um, so people are, are kind of left out. They're left out of the, of the humor or the joke that someone, someone might be saying. Mm-hmm. So there's all things I want to do just kind of know, just kind of let you know about and educate you about a little more uh, as we go along. Yep? I, I don't want to split the room where this isn't political or anything, but I thought it was kind of fascinating what you're talking about. Um, just as an example with Will Smith, how right. initially when Chris Rock made the joke, he laughed right. about it, right. but then when he turned and realized, wait a second, I'm, I shouldn't be laughing at this. This isn't funny, and had a completely different change. Right. Yeah. Quickly there. Absolutely. That's a perfect example of that, mm-hmm. um, and how people can uh, misconstrue humor or, or take it very personally. Um, so it's a really good example of that. Yeah. Any other comments? Yeah. What do they say when they say? What do they mean when they say timing is everything? Yeah, I think that's, you know, we talk about, you know, you're much like a 
stand-up comedian I'm referring to, or, or uh, watching like a TV show, a sitcom, or a funny movie. Um, everything's kind of timed, um, so it's really about you know how 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 you set up a joke, how it's set up, and in, in the context it's, it's set up. Um, so that's a whole that's a, that's a very interesting question. It really is, um, and how they you know how you time a joke, uh, and how that all works out, and that's a little beyond what I do. Uh, but it's all about, you know, how it's perceived and, and the context and the environment uh, and how you time the joke or, or, the, or the humor, whatever that may be. There's the timing and then there's also yeah. the, uh, yeah. what do comedians often say, uh, uh, it's tragedy plus time before you could, I mean, there, you can't like make fun of some tragic thing that just happened. Uh, there has to be enough time that goes by before anybody can, you know, even attempt humor at something. Right, exactly. Yeah. Does that, that make sense? That makes sense to you? Okay. Let me make sure you answer. Any other comments or questions? Uh, it's really fascinating when you talk about the difference between laughter and humor. It's a really interesting topic um, that I could talk for the next two hours about. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not going to do, do that to you. Um, so, uh, people good in a good spot right now? Okay, so we're going to do a few more exercises, um, and then we're going to do a, a, a wrap-up and we'll do some question, a Q&A, okay? Um, so the next exercise we're going to do, this is called, uh, this is called the chicken laugh. <laughs> I kind of did that earlier a little bit with the uh, father leader laugh, but this is how it goes. You like right? this? Okay, you're a chicken. Go like this, and go. <laughs> Whoa! 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 Something on our birds. 
I'm not too sure what that is. <laughs> so we're going to keep on running. For some reason, it makes us laugh. So we're going to go like this. <laughs> Whoa! And these are practices, uh, this is from a book that I have, or I've used, uh, from a uh, person I train with in this work, and his name is Steve Wilson. Uh, his organization is called the World Laughter Tour. And he wrote a book called Good Hard Living. He didn't, he didn't mess around with that title, did he? Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, so these, are things, these practices are something you do, that doesn't have to go in order. You can use it any time you want throughout your week, throughout your day. Um, and the first one, I'm going to read this, is Monday's Over Compliments. This overcomes our tendency to criticize and be judgmental of others, which robs us of laughter. Look for the good in others. Tell them, uh, tell them about it, and you just might end up laughing together. Okay? And Monday thought, a kind word goes, uh, I'm sorry, a kind word often goes unspoken, but never goes unheard. Okay, so that's a wonderful practice. Mike, can I read, can I read the next one? Sure, I got that. Um, Two days are for flexibility. There's no laughter in being stubborn. We all set, we are, we all get set in our ways, and yet it's a good thing to be open to new ideas. It can be more fun than being in a rut. An open mind lets the laughter in, 
And then the Tuesday thought is, the tree that bends in the wind does not break. Terrific. Yeah, being flexible, how important that is, right? So try something new during your day. You know, if you're a walker, try a different route when you walk. Or try a different restaurant you've ever tried before. Um, something to kind of, you know, be open to new, new ideas and new, new way of doing things. That's really important. Um, so, I'm going to go to the next one here. Wednesdays for gratitude. Do you want to read that one? Or do you want to read that, that the next practice here? Wednesdays are for gratitude. A good way to feel miserable is always to think you need something to make you happy. An attitude of gratitude brings serenity and laughter. The Wednesday thought is, <clears throat> as you go through life, let us let this always be your goal to keep your eye upon the donut and not upon the whole. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and also I want to point out about this practice, some, actually this is something I do on a regular basis. I have uh, a gratitude journal. So I do journaling around what I'm grateful for during my day. Um, so simple things like that are really important, I think. They really are. Um, so simple things like that are, make a big difference in our lives. They really do. Um, so try that. You know, if you're into journaling, and you know, create a, a journal around your, your gratitude journal. Um, I think it's really important. Um, so, the next one, Thursdays are for kindness. Thursdays are for kindness. Think of ways of making the other person's life a little easier. Simple kindness may be the most vital key to the riddle of how human beings can live with each other in peace, harmony, and the planet we all share. Excellent. Yep. The practice of kindness inspires people to pass kindness on to others. Yeah. Simple kindness goes a, a long way. Mm -hmm. really I think we all need more kindness in our, in our communities, in our world that we live in. Um, so you know, there's something called random, uh, random acts of kindness. Find things that you want you do for other people, like opening a door for somebody, or buy somebody a cup of coffee, or you know things that are, you know, are kind of random acts, random acts of kindness. Um, so that's something to, to remember, and something to add to your life, you know, and, and what it, what that does to you, and how it makes you feel when you do something that's kind to other people. Um, so this, you know, simple things like that, you know. Uh, any questions or comments about that? I have a question. Yeah. What is the difference between an act of kindness and taking care of someone who doesn't need it? Who doesn't want it? Need it or want it? <laughs> who doesn't need taking care of or wanting taking care of? I was in a gondola one time, terrified, and, uh -huh. and just amused at myself at being terrified with one other person, and I said. You know, just, just for honesty's sake here, I'm terrified, and she instantly tried to fix it for me. And I noticed I didn't like that, and how often I do that. Mm -hmm. So what's mm -hmm. the difference? I mean, how do you know the difference? That's great. <laughs> That's interesting. What do you say? That is a great problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it has a lot to do with the person who you're right. referring to, or who you're trying to be kind to. Yeah. And did you, I'm sorry, did you have a comment? Okay, that's why you're here. Okay, that's all right. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, things have to do with you know, the person you do it with, or how familiar you are with that person, and, um, and you know, just kind of find that, you know, just kind of, I mean, you know, kind of figure out what, what, if it's appropriate or not appropriate. That's my kind of feeling about it. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. That's, 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 I could like, like, learn more about that. And, that's really interesting. Um, all right, uh, any other comments about kindness? Thoughts? Uh -huh. yeah. Got it. You got it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, oh, thank you for that question, by the way. Yep. Just how good it feels to be kind. I was trying to move my sisters. We share our trash and recycling. I was walking to her house yesterday. She came and swiped that and did it instead. 
and it felt terrible to be deprived, like robbed of a small kindness. <laughs> so I kind yeah. of struck a chord when he said that. I tried the to other explain side to her, of kindness. I tried to explain to her that her sister is obsessed <laughs> with the idea of being indebted to anybody for anything. Uh -huh. right. yeah. So she, she will always jump in front of you to, to do what needs to be done. So it's not if it concerns her. And not just the giving, but the, it's so joyful to give, even in small ways. Right. I guess. Right. Yeah. That's great. Like, and for those of us who have a difficulty receiving, it's it's good to remember that. Yeah. Right. What a gift it is to receive graciously. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And so they, sometimes that's harder. Much harder. Much harder. Right? Mm -hmm. Much harder. Yep, absolutely. I know a lot of people that have a hard time with that. Um, so, yep. Is it for, thank you for those comments. I believe this is great. Um, the next one is Friday's or, or Forgiveness. I'd like to you want to read the next one. Friday's our Forgiveness. Forgiveness means letting go of anger. Finding a way to see those who have hurt you in a new light of compassion. Releasing anger makes you healthier and opens a room for your heart for more laughter. And the thought is, I never hold a grudge before. I never hold a grudge because while I am being angry, the other guy is out dancing. <laughs> Man, what, a, what a great quote that is. <laughs> great. Who, who remembers Buddy Hackett? <laughs> I'm going to folks all about to remember Buddy Hackett. That's um, too true to be funny. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's, sometimes it's good to let go of anger. Okay. Um, so the next one, actually the last one is my favorite. Weekends for chocolates. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, want, you want to read that one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Weekends for chocolates. Remember to eat some chocolate or another favorite food. Remember to take time for leisure, pleasure, and relaxation. Weekend song. A bad day fishing speeds a good day working. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so really. <laughs> Unless it's your work. Unless it's my work, right. Exactly, right. <laughs> uh, so, you know, really the, the weekends is, is kind of a, uh, you know, kind of the symbol for being good to yourself. It really is. Or weekends for chocolates, it is. Uh, it, you know, just you know, go out with friends you haven't seen for a while, or you know, take some time out for yourself. We live such busy lives that we forget to take care of ourselves and be good to ourselves, right? Um, so that's really important too. And how we, you know, so you know, spend you know, find you know, find like an hour or two hours during a week and just do have have me time. Do something that, that makes you feel good and it brings, brings pleasure to you, okay, or joy as well. Um, so let's, so I want to, let's make sure you understand that. Um, who wants to, uh, who wants to read that last, can we all read that? Because yeah, we did that, that was yeah. my mind here. <laughs> um, any questions, any comments about, what we just talked about, yeah? What does fishing have to do with chocolates? <laughs> I think it doesn't quote. <laughs> I never, nobody ever answered that, uh, asked that to me before, so I don't, <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I think it's just a quote that this was added to the idea of, of being good yourself, I think. If you well, love chocolate, you might love fishing. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're a fisherman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chocolate covered Swedish fish, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Chocolate covered Swedish fish. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, any other comments, questions, thoughts? Yep. I was thinking of the most, one of the most powerful social moments I've ever seen in my life when I had recently <coughs> moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, and the uh, Ku Klux Klan decided to have a huge rally in a march right down the main street of Knoxville. And thousands of people came out to see this. And <coughs> So here's 30 or 40 men, I guess they were men, 
all dressed up in these white costumes with these tall white hats walking down Main Street. I don't know if they were carrying a burning cross or not. <coughs> but some courageous black people came out to see the uh, parade too. And uh, in, right in the middle of it, a little girl, maybe four or five years old, ran out into the street, got away from her mother, ran out into the street, into the middle of the parade, and picked up this marcher's white robe to look up and see who it was. <laughs> and the whole crowd, the whole town, burst into laughter, and it broke up the, it broke up the parade. Wow. Everybody, every, everybody just kept laughing, and, and the marchers went home disgusted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And I'll never forget that. that. I don't know. Well, that really is when was that? Yeah. 60, about 67, I think. Wow. Wow. That's mm -hmm. something. Wow. How that yeah. mother felt before the laughter started. <laughs> yeah. I've got a, a similar story. Recently, I heard a podcast about humor. It's a fascinating topic to me, and, and I think it's very important. I was talking to Nancy a little bit about it beforehand about the frequency with which we laugh as children and how quickly that dies off and right. the science tells us that around 22, 23, there's just about zero laughter on a daily basis for that age group um, because of all the different stressors and, and things in their life. But I thought another an interesting part of that, that piece uh, of that podcast was a story about Madeline Albright huh. who had an amazing uh, sense of humor and she used to wear pins that would always reflect yeah. where she was on a daily basis. Right. And at one point, uh, there was a huge story, a break about um, some eavesdropping equipment that was found in the United States um, that had been planted by Russia. So as she was meeting with the foreign minister from Russia, she wore a big, giant bug. Uh, <laughs> 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 That was a big bug, and uh, uh, just everyone knew what that meant, and it just broke tension. Sure. Um, and uh, at the same time, you know, got the point across. We know exactly what you're doing. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I think she used that on a regular basis to sort of break tension and right. Right. keep humor out there. That's a great story. Yeah. I mean, the, the power of humor is incredible. Yep. This reminds me. These exercises remind me of a game that we used to play when we were kids at um, sleepovers. When people didn't all know each other, we play ha ha, mm -hmm. where you lay down and you put your head on somebody's stomach and you crisscross, <laughs> yeah. and the person would go ha, and the next one would go ha ha, and you had to keep going until somebody laughed. And the whole point was not to laugh. Right. Of course, by the time you got to the second person, everybody right. was hysterical. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's terrific. Any other comments? No. Practices of good hard living, or so we're going to do uh, a little wrap up, and then we'll have a few minutes of if people have any questions. We'll have a little Q and A uh, to kind of end our, our program here together. So before we do that, I just want to say thank you for being here. I really appreciate it, and I really enjoy being all of you and laughing with you. And um, I hope you take some of these ideas, a lot of the idea around laughter and humor, um, good, the practice of good hard living, and home with you and use it in your own life. Thank you oh. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you being here. I really do. Valley neighbors for yeah. all the cool things you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to do a little wrap, wrap up here. Okay. This is called the three cheers. So um, you stand up or you sit down. It never works for you. Um, you can do it either way. Um, so, yeah. So here we go. So we're going to. Right, our arms, you can have to as you raise our arm, we go like this. Oh, we go like this, right? <laughs> so here we go. I am the happiest person in the world. Yes! I am the healthiest person in the world. Yes! I love weekends. Yes! Ho, ho, ho. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ho. Thanks so much. It's been great. Um, if you have any questions right now, I'll be here. 
um, or comments or anything else I can help you with around laughter or humor. Um, this is the time to go. Yeah? I'm a little put out with you, really. <laughs> They're throwing chocolate. No oh, yeah. <laughs> <all around. laughs> so, so that, that, that's really good. That's an example of deadpan humor. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I thought it was actually very good. Had us all wondering which way you were going to go. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't the only one, right? <laughs> right. Uh, any other comments or questions? I could. I can't really Any thoughts at all? Always fun, Trevor. Okay. Thank you, Thank you for Thank for you. being here. It's been wonderful. Yeah. All right. Rest your day. Um, yeah, and I'll be here if you want to just talk afterward. I'd love to do that.